So this is the story of how I took this shoe. No, can I have the shoe? Thank you. This shoe and its counterpart, which I think has been long destroyed, and turned it into these shirts. So to tell the full story involving monsoons, lawyers, and massive factory delays, we have to go back to late 2018. So why am I driving down country lanes at about 6 p.m. on, I think, the 2nd of November with a bucket of paint, a paintbrush, and some cling film in the back of my car? And the answer to that question is, this is day one of trying to create a shirt, or at least the pattern for a shirt. Oh, God, there's a dog. Hey, Lukey. Why are you barking? So, the idea, it's not really gonna make sense, but by now you would have already seen the shirt if the idea works, is to create a pattern that is essentially based off of the smears that shoes leave on walls. First thing I've got to do is essentially create a fake white wall that I can then smear my feet all over. That is a finished white wall. I don't really know how much paint to apply. I'm gonna go light first, I think. Initial trials with watercolour paint were a bit weak. All right, that was not enough paint. Here comes Dad with a shitload of paint. Oh, that smells fucking wicked. This is serious stuff. It became pretty apparent that I needed to experiment quite a bit. I needed to create some variants, so I was testing different ways that I would land on the wall, how much my feet would skid down. So this area here, I'm kind of liking the look of that. That looks a little bit like a penis. I also tried some takeoffs and landings, but they didn't work out so well. The last thing I really wanted to make was a shirt that looked like it had very obvious footprints on it. I think we can all agree that that would look pretty cliche and probably pretty lame. I think after all this chaos, we might, we might be somewhere, hopefully. After I shot photos of all the different marks that I'd left on the wall, I then sent them to a friend of mine who's a designer, and once he'd vectorized them for me, it was there that we could really start playing around with different variations of the pattern. So we have some developments with the pattern. It's about a week later. I just got back from Airwick last night. Jake has just sent across this, which as you can see is really quite a blend of a number of different, of sort of different skids and steps and smears and everything that I use. But personally, I really, really like it. I'm definitely a fan. And also Darwin is, just, why are you eating my feet? Yeah, 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 yeah. After deciding on a pattern, it was then time to mock up the shirts. I actually really like the larger print that you can see here, and to be honest, until editing this footage, I didn't actually realise that we'd ended up going for something a little bit smaller. Not quite sure how that happened, but I still love the final result either way. Alright, it is Christmas Eve. Um, I actually received this the other day, but I didn't have my camera on me, so I figured I'd shoot this now. I have just received the first sample of, we still don't have a name for this, whatever the shirt is gonna be. Generally, really, really impressed and happy. Apparently the sample, it needs to be black, like it's a slightly kind of navy blue fabric almost, and the print isn't quite kind of white. A few little things, like there's a, a fade in the, the print here and stuff, but that's already getting sorted out with the, fab, uh, the factory. We just found out we can potentially do, I think, two other colorways of it within the, the minimum order quantity that we have. We're not sure yet, but we're gonna do some mock-ups and um, see, see what we're looking at. But yeah, personally, very, very happy. So the next step was to submit feedback on this sample and then request the shirt to be sampled in our three chosen colorways. Now, due to Christmas, an Indian holiday that happens sort of early in the year and just numerous factory delays, we didn't end up receiving the next samples until early May 2019. This combined with 
other products that we had in the works getting delayed as well meant that our hopes of Soul Destroyer being a summer 2019 collection were rapidly going out the window. I've somehow misplaced both the black and the grey samples that we initially received. I have a sneaking suspicion some of the boys might have secretly stolen them and just not told me, but you can see the black one here. <laughs> And you can see the grey one here. I should probably add at this point, if you haven't yet bought and watched Soul Destroyer, then please do, because it's really good and those two clips are like the tip of the iceberg. But while the black and the grey samples had potential, there was still stuff that needed to be sorted out with them. The red shirt was really a, a, an amazing example of how frustrating it can be to sample and work with factories sometimes, because this is sort of roughly the colorway we were looking for, kind of dark, maroony red. This is what we got. I mean, that is quite something. Uh, if anyone cares, this will be up for sale in a sample stale sale later in the year. So if you want it, there's there's one in the world. So it's quite bright. Now this is where it got really messed up. After we'd received those samples, they weren't perfect. Obviously the red wasn't what we were after, but the factory was confident that they could get the color right. So we approved to go into the PPS sampling stage. Now PPS stands for pre-production. So essentially the aim of those samples is that they are your last sample you're gonna order. Once you get them, you check everything over and then they move into full production. Now we, we went ahead and ordered that and then everything promptly fell apart. So let's talk about the rain. So that video that you just watched was sent from near the factory in India where these shirts were being made. And basically around the time that we went to order the PPS sample, India suffered some of the worst monsoons they've ever had. Workers couldn't get to work because of the rain. And then when they could get to work, they were struggling to dye the fabric because the humidity in the air meant that they would try and dye it a color and it would just not be the color that they were trying to dye it. So this delay really caused these shirts to drag on. Other products, our t-shirts, our shorts, stuff like this, were starting to move forward. We'd obviously missed the summer. We'd kind of decided to push most likely to the next year. We weren't too keen on releasing Soul Destroyer in the winter of 2019, but the shirts we just were hearing less and less and less about. So from here, things got really weird and started to drag on. And none of it is that interesting for you guys, but essentially we kept kind of hearing about delays, but nothing really seemed to add up. And what ended up happening and what we found out that happened was that the two owners of the factory that were producing the impact shirts and also our multi-fit trousers had a massive falling out. One of them left, and the other one moved to a completely different part of India and started producing garments from a different operation and sort of not really telling his clients that any of this had happened. The impact shirts, for some reason, seemed to just kind of get forgotten about, I guess due to the delays with fabric and things. Whenever we'd ask, whenever our sourcing agent would ask, they just, they were trying to fleece us basically, like they were trying to screw us over. And eventually it just got to the stage where we just said, screw it, we're gonna cut all ties with this factory and walk away. Which due to the fact that money had been sent places and contracts had been signed, they then promptly were threatening to sue us and, and loads of fun stuff, even though we were completely justified in saying that they screwed us and blah, blah, blah. No one cares, but it was, awful personally to deal with um and and yeah not something i ever thought i would get into but i guess you you live and you learn so after all that we basically just had to start fresh again we had to find a new factory and we're pushing to work with more sustainable factories that have sort of sustainable supply chains so that narrowed who we could work with a fair bit but 
we found a factory, had to make sure that they would handle the order, had to make sure that they were capable of it. And then nobody really wants to start directly on the PPS sample and just commit to the bulk orders. So really we had to sample with them again to make sure that they could handle everything and make sure that the results were gonna be what we wanted. So this meant more sampling, more delays, more waiting. We ended up with this as a test for the fabric. We use a 100% modal, which is like a kind of silky, it's just a really nice fabric basically. But this, once again, will also be in a sample sale. Kind of Motus branded green shirt. But thankfully this factory was super on the ball, really, really quick with the sampling process. And we were finally at a stage where we could commit to the main order and everything would go into production. And then a global pandemic happened. As you can imagine, factories closed down, more delays, we still have to get Soul Destroyer out because we desperately needed to release the rest of the clothes. So that release last month, that was crazy. And then these are out now. If you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching it. I've no idea what it's gonna be like because I'm basically just waffling and yes, I am filming this on my iPhone, but I would loved making these shirts. It was an absolute nightmare, but I loved the idea of taking like a weird, concept and then making it into that reality and they're easily one of my favorite products that we've ever done with Motus so if you like them pick them up and yeah thank you for the continued support